Hello again. Uh, if you were watching earlier, I'm afraid I just got cut off, so I'm going to start again. Um, I hope you are having a lovely beginning to your week and you're getting some sunshine uh, as I am here. So today I want to talk to you about any influences on appetite and hunger and there are a number of different influences and um, but I want to really focus on the physiological mainly those physical ones and the reason I want to talk to you I think there's a lot of um, mis, um, probably misconceptions around around our hunger appetite and cravings and um, there's a lot of things that people uh, worry about in terms of their hunger. I know that a lot of my clients really worry about um, some days when they're more hungry than others. They don't understand what that's all about. Um, and they don't understand why sometimes they have more cravings than others. So um, it can really be helpful sometimes when you um, have an understanding of physiological reasons behind that. Now there are other reasons, there are um, other sort of hedonic factors, so the fun, the pleasure obviously uh, in terms of why we might have that hunger and craving for food, so taste, texture and smell. There's environmental, um, at certain times in the season uh, you can feel like you, you sort of, there's a sort of you feel like your body's demanding more uh, carbohydrates, for example, and that uh, can be affected by serotonin levels, which I'll go into in a little, in a few minutes. Um, temperature, often in the winter, we want to cozy up and have, uh, perhaps have more um, sort of carby types, warming, sort of comforting foods and availability as well uh, in our environment. Um, just what what we have with us, with within our needs, within our area, within our environment can influence what we're craving for as well. And there's also uh, psychological and emotional reasons such as stress and different mood states if we are feeling down or angry or you know bored, um, if we've got unmet needs then this can all influence our hunger and appetite. But the physiological uh, side of things is what I really want to focus on today. So first of all we have uh, the distension of the stomach. So we have receptors in our stomach and when we eat and our stomach distends uh, the receptors um, are then you know send a signal to our brain that we are beginning to feel full. Um, we have, there is a um, chemical called CCK and when food passes into our duodenum it creates a satiety and satiety basically means being satisfied, not necessarily um, the same as, as fullness, it's that satisfaction feeling because sometimes you can feel full but not satisfied I think. Um, and we have other gut peptides that also do this job. And then we've got certain hormones. So we've got leptin, you might have heard of. Leptin is that um, appetite hormone that helps to tell us when we are feeling full. And um, our adipose fat, uh, some of our fat, uh, plays a role in, le in regulating leptin. So when we've got that fat, um, uh, that can help with our leptin regulation. So, and we've also got ghrelin. This ghrelin is another one, another appetite hormone that actually tells us when we're hungry. So we've got those going on and those can really be affected by all sorts of things, including sleep. If we're not having a uh, good quality sleep, that can really affect our hunger and what we're craving for the next day. We also have the impact of stress. Now stress, affects us uh, physiologically in many ways. It, um, we find that we can have a surge of glucagon and when that happens, when um, blood, our blood sugar falls and um, the hormone is released when the fight or, for the fight or fight response and it's really activated when fats and sugars um, are then pulled into the blood because we need them um, and you know and it can also affect our dopamine dopamine surge as well so um, the overall effect of stress can mean either losing your appetite 
Um, but for many people, it can mean getting very hungry or having cravings. And it completely depends on the individual and on the individual's sensitivity to these certain chemicals. Another thing to think about is your eat drop in estrogen. And this happens during menstruation and it also happens uh, for midlife women during the menopause, perimenopause. Um, we get this leads to a serotonin drop. You've probably heard of serotonin. It's a brain chemical uh, that um, is known to make us feel happy. Um, and we get that drop um, in serotonin when the estrogen drops. And this can have an impact also on our hunger and what we're craving. It can make our, uh, cause a drop in blood glucose levels. Uh, or an unstable blood glucose levels and it can increase cravings and appetite um, and also impulsivity as well so if you're someone that struggles with binge eating and you find that it's particularly uh, difficult at certain times of the month or if you just find that you have intense cravings um, at certain times of the month try to work out um, where you are in your cycle if you have a regular cycle it's obviously easier uh, or work out what's going on is it in fact that you're going into perimenopause and perhaps your um, you know your estrogen levels are really fluctuating um, initially which is what happens they go high and low um, extreme highs and lows so that could be um, a real cause for that and then you've got also um, you've got um, dieting itself um, also affects the brain and um, it floods the brain with NYP, which increases your demand for carbohydrates as well. You've got endorphins. Now, when levels fall, it creates a real demand for fat and sugar as well. Um, and it is reduced when your hunger uh, and your di your di sorry your hunger is reduced when your diet is adequate. And that's really that's a really important point. So, thinking about low blood sugar and low serotonin and low endorphins particularly they're low um, if we can help with that by having a really sort of balanced diet can really help with all of these things um, and help you stabilize your blood sugar and um, and help uh, with serotonin levels and endorphins so these are a number of different things um, and I think it's just worth noticing what might be going on rather than sending you into a panic mode. I know some people, some of my clients I find really, really, it really stresses them out and it might send them into dieting or restriction uh, or it might have done in the past um, now that they're working on um, really um, helping to balance their diet. They feel so much better. They feel like they're in control of their hunger, their appetite and their cravings, but they're eating well and um, they're, they're not on diets and they're not restricting um, and they feel much more balanced and in control. So um, I'd love to hear if you have any questions about that, um, do share them and um, I hope to see you soon.